Well, good evening. It's Charlie Z L Two CTM. Um, I just thought I'd do a, um, a second video as a follow-up to the one I put up uh, last night. Um, after a, uh, a really interesting comment from uh, from Michael in the comments from yesterday's video, along the lines of the uh, MPF one hundred and two being more of an obsolete uh, component, and in some cases actually having some tariffs upon it. And maybe a better idea, or uh, potentially looking at the, the J310 being more common. Um, I, mu I must admit that was uh, news to me. I, I always thought that the MPF102 was a uh, a very common component, uh, hence the reason why I, uh, I picked on it. But either way, uh, based on that, what I did tonight when I came home from work is I um, I, uh, I I took a, a J310 and went through the same process as yesterday. Uh, and then build up an amp to look at it. So I just want to go through that tonight and uh, it's been quite a useful exercise because it sort of highlighted a, a problem I had yesterday which um, has now been overcome. So I guess going back to basics for a start um, let me just go up to uh, the screen here. So what we can see up there is the spec sheet for the, the J310 uh, and as we can see in a similar fashion to what we saw with the MPF102 the IDSS value here has a range from 12 to 30 odd milliamps um, and then the VGS here uh, so giving us, uh, sorry what am I looking at here um, there it is, sorry, uh, minus 2 to minus 6.5 volts for, for that, um, that pinch off voltage, so somewhere in that range there so again you know, as, as was suggested by Wes uh, a better idea is to, to measure that um, those values uh, using a little test setup and then using those values in the formulas so if I was just to come out I'll just sort of reiterate uh, what that is so in terms of this configuration here with the the two multimeters and the switch box uh, it's along the lines of this so we have our MPF 102 uh, my apologies it's not 102 we're actually using the the J310 in this case um, I've got in the uh, the drain source there uh, a 100 ohm resistor just to limit our, our maximum current we can pump through that um, it's always going to be, if this was a dead short the current that's flowing through here purely by the 100 ohms is uh, more than what will actually happen once we have the, J3, uh, the J310 the J in circuit so um, that's fine um, and then in the, uh, the source we have a variable resistor there which is the, uh, the switch box we see over there and that goes to ground and then our gate is grounded. So again, as current flows up here, we get negative positive voltage drop. Uh, so as the voltage at the source, source gate drain, uh, becomes more and more positive, uh, when you look at that with respect to um, the gate, uh, it is uh, getting more and more negative if you, do, if you were to reference it from here, looking back at the gate. So that's where we get our, our, um, our VGS. So V gate source. So again as that increases we get to a point where we get to our VP, our pinch off voltage and the current through the device uh, falls to essentially zero. So this is the configuration here which we see over the back here and then in terms of the two meters uh, what I've done in my particular setup uh, let me just grab a, an eraser um, as I have down here just a second resistor, it's a 0 0.1 ohm resistor there, uh, which I have a, a voltmeter sitting across there, uh, measuring millivolts, uh, and then all I have to do is just, whatever reading that is, move the decimal place across by one, and then that becomes uh, my pseudo milliameter. Uh, it's just a, a preference that I like to have, rather than having the current passing through uh, the ammeter side of the house. And then the second voltmeter is just sitting uh, right across there, so just measuring uh, essentially the voltage at the source uh, and because this is referenced here it's effectively the same as VGS so this is my VGS meter here and this is my meter which is giving me a pseudo uh, current anyway so that's the configuration there um, I then went through and did exactly the same procedure as uh, last night uh, in that I varied the VGS and then plotted for each value of uh, VGS. In this, time, in this case, I did it in uh, 0.25 volt uh, increments. I then plotted what I was getting in terms of current. 
um, and as we can see the outcome was uh, when I got down to a, a VGS of uh, 2.1 volts, in other words negative 2.1 volts on the gate, my, my current through the device um, here in milliamps effectively fell to zero. And then if I go back the other way, um, if I had um, no voltage on the gate, in other words zero volts on the gate, uh, then I was getting a maximum current through of 32 milliamps. Incidentally that's just slightly above what the spec sheet says but um, certainly um, in the ballpark. So suffice to say for this particular device I had there uh, an IDSS with 32 milliamps and a VP of 2.1 volts. And then I uh, basically set up exactly the same uh, circuit as we saw yesterday. So we've got the device here, the J310. We have our, 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 our source resistance, which we'll work out using a formula down here. Uh, that's fully bypassed with a 100 nanofarad capacitor. On the gate side of the house, got a 1 mega ohm resistor there uh, with our input coming through again a DC decoupling of um, 100 nanofarads. On the drain side of the house, again, was that FT37-43 transformer there uh, with 15 turns on the primary or on the drain side and three turns on the secondary going to our 50 ohm load there. Yeah, 50 ohm load. Right, so, uh, and then just a small 10 ohm resistor there as a decoupling off the, the VCC. And this point here, from an RF point of view, decoupled to earth with a 100 nanofarad capacitor. Anyway, so that's that was the test configuration. Uh, now what I elected to do this time, which was subtly different from what I did yesterday, um, I decided, in terms of the quiescent current, I was going to select a current based on uh, a... I wanted to select a point that was halfway between zero, uh, which is IDSS, and our pinch off. So I, I, I sort of ballparked a figure of about here, which turned out to be roughly 10 milliamps. So uh, that was what I decided. So yesterday I decided to choose a current that was halfway between maximum um, IDSS and zero. I chose a point about here. This time I thought it would be more logical, and it's worked out to be really well actually, to be halfway between, like I say, um, zero or max tack, so to speak, and our voltage pinch off, so around here, which equates to 10 milliamps. Right, so then having now decided that I'm going to use as our quiescent current through the device of 10 milliamps, I now need to work out what my source resistor is going to be in order to uh, in order to, to generate or to have that 10 milliamps. Um, and we, as we saw yesterday, the source resistance is VP over IS, brackets the square root of ID, that's our quiescent current here and here, divided by IDS, IDSS minus 1. So just substituting our values in here, um, so minus 2.1 uh, volts for our pinch off, as we saw up here off the, off the graph divided by 10 milliamps, which is our desired quiescent current. Square root, again that same quiescent current there, divided by I, our IDSS, 32 milliamps, as we got off our graph. Comes out at 92 ohms. I'm going to use 100 ohms as the closest standard value for that. Um, what I also did then was then decided to work out uh, what the uh, theoretical, I guess based on uh, pure formulas would be for an output voltage across that 50 ohm resistor and then I compared that uh, with an actual test with the oscilloscope and the signal generator. So I'm going to use an input voltage of 1 volt peak to peak. Uh, as we saw yesterday with that uh, 15 to 3 turn transformer uh, that gives us a 15 divided by 3 equals 5 so 5 squared so n squared times 50 gives us that so that's the impedance transformation from 50 ohms on the load back through to 1250 ohms being presented to the drain of the J310. And we know that um, uh, our I signal, so the current variation uh, through the device as a function of our voltage in, is, is Vn times our transconductance, gives us our current. So the unknown that we don't know at the moment is Gm. So we need to work that one out, our transconductance. Uh, and as we saw yesterday, that's two times IDSS divided by VP brackets 1 minus VGS, our voltage across the gate and the source, 
uh, divided by our pinch off voltage. So again, substituting in our known values, so 2 times 32 milliamps, which we know, divided by our pinch off. Now, this is where I went wrong yesterday, and I will cover that. Um, yesterday, when I did this formula to work out the theoretical output, I left that as minus 2.1. So I had a minus 2.1 here, and a minus 2.1 here, which actually ended up with a GM that was twice as large as if I'd just taken the magnitude. So that seems to be the way it is. Um, uh, to be honest with you, I haven't gone back through and checked any textbooks to see if that was actually quite clearly spelt out. So it was probably through more trial and error. So when you see the VP up here, it's the magnitude. So in terms of mathematical symbology, it's the magnitude of VP. We don't care about the sign, only the magnitude. So again, substituting our values in, 32 divided by our VP, magnitude 2.1, 1 minus our VGS. So I said I wanted to have um, 10 milliamps, so that 10 milliamps is now passing through our, our 100 ohm resistor, so there'd be a voltage drop across here. Um, I said yesterday that next to no current flows into the gate of a JFET, so therefore for all intents and purposes, because there's a DC blocking resistor there, there is no voltage drop across this, because no current is flowing through here, so therefore the voltage at the gate is effectively at zero. So therefore, voltage gate source is the same as the voltage across here. So that's what we're doing in this formula over here. We're going our 10 milliamps times our 100 ohms, gives us our VGS divided by VP. Again, just the magnitude, so 2.1, comes out to be 1.596 times 10 to the minus 2. And I think that's in uh, micro modes or MOS. Um, anyway. And as we set up here, the, the, the signal variation through the device is our transconductance times our VN. So therefore, now that we've worked out, worked out our GN, we can multiply that by that by 1 volt peak to peak. Gives us a 15.96 milliamps peak to peak. Exactly what we saw yesterday. So therefore, our V out across the primary of the transformer, so that's the 1250 ohm side, is from Ohm's law, V equals IR, so current times our voltage, gives us 19.95 volts peak to peak across the primary of that transformer. So therefore, what is the voltage on the on the secondary side? So what I've notionally called fifth, uh, the voltage across the 50 ohm resistor would then be that voltage on the primary divided by N, our turns ratio, so 15 divided by three gives us an N of five, so 19.95 divided by 5 comes out at 4 volts peak to peak. And uh, we will check that on the scope uh, in a sec. What I am going to do is just very quickly go back to what we saw yesterday, which was this sheet of paper here. Um, so this was using the MPF 102. I did exactly what I did just then yesterday and came out with a voltage of 2.24. Uh, when I went back through and repeated those calculations, but this time, rather than using the minus 3.5, using the magnitude, I came out with all the way through 1.18 volts peak to peak, and that's pretty well exactly what I saw on the scope. So uh, that's that's really good. So that's that now accounts for why I had twice the output voltage across that 50 ohm resistance theoretically than what I actually saw in reality. So uh, it, was a, it seems to be an error that I had. In, in applying that formula. So don't use the sign, just use the magnitude. Anyway, so having said all that, um, that's what we have up here. So let me just zoom in a little bit there. Um, so what we have now is that transformer is in the circuit, as I've just shown you. Um, we have a, uh, a quiescent current of uh, 10 milliamps, uh, currently on uh, 6 megs there and a voltage of one volt peak to peak so I'll go back to frequency and as we can see it's actually we saw yesterday as well it's going to vary the frequency that's now um, three megs and as we climb up seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen and now we're starting oh, so it's still pretty good and then we're now at 19 megahertz and we're starting to see that sort of that drop off there oh in fact it's still going up it's 24 that's interesting isn't that interesting? 
Um, but either way, suffice to say, uh, in terms of uh, a, a broad bandedness um, across that HF spectrum, it certainly seems to be working very well. Um, so, uh, if we were just to pick on, say, um, 7 megs, um, and if we were to look at our voltage there, we uh, got um, 1 volt peak to peak, 1, 2, 3, 3.5. Interesting enough, when I first turned this on before, I was getting close to 4 volts. So as the, it would appear that as things have warmed up, got slightly less uh, gain there. But for all intents and purposes there, that's pretty close to that uh, 4 volts that we're getting out there. So all things being equal, if we now go 1, 2, 3, 3.5. So uh, let's clear that. Um, 3.5 enter divided by 1 equals obviously 3.5 log 20 times comes out at 10 dB so that amplifier as it currently stands is got a, uh, a voltage gain of uh, 10 dB so which is actually pretty well what I was sort of after roughly for that uh, that antenna amplifier so I'm going to um, I think I'm going to actually insert that amplifier now as it stands into the uh, into the SE speed rig, which is under the, uh, the the dust cloth down the bottom there, uh, and use that uh, I think as a uh, an RF antenna amplifier. Anyway, so I hope that was um, that was of use and uh, of interest. It was certainly interesting from from my point of view uh, that calculation in terms of on paper working out. If I just go back to this one here, uh, working out what the theoretical voltage out is. Uh, based on those formulas and the values um, actually measured, oh, sorry, bumping that by actually that little test circuit. So um, I think I will add that to my little uh, my little design notes folder. That if I was to use uh, the J310 again in, in a similar type of amplifier, that would be a um, a good approach to to designing um, the the, the biasing um, setup in terms of RS and the quiescent current going through it. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Um, I will say thank you very much for those, for the comments that came in on the last video. I certainly really appreciate those. Um, so thank you very much for that. And the other really good news is I had an envelope turn up today in the mail. And uh, I now have, what was that, two, four, six, eight, can't remember what I ordered, I think it was 20, um, AD8307s. So um, those little devices are turned up. Um, I've got a little breakout board that will go from that surface mounted to a... Um, a pitch slightly larger that I can actually get a soldering iron onto. So um, I think I'll now sort of change my focus back into the um, the uh, uh, to the forward and reverse power meter there, um, and then um, so sort of continue on with that project. So that's good. Um, the software is all built up for that. So now it's just a matter of uh, integrating it all together and uh, getting a couple of these 8307s to provide that forward and reflective power. Uh, back into the um, into the display uh, system. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble now, so that's a uh, that's my cl my, uh, my my clue to or my um, my uh, trigger to turn the video off. So I'll just say 73 is there. Thanks very much, and um, we shall see you next time. Cheers all.